Hi everyone, I'm Nettie Kay. Welcome back to my studio. Hey, today I'd like to try something a little bit different. I'm working on a commission piece from uh, one of my clients here in the United States and she's asked me to paint some apples on a canvas. Now this is a really big canvas. It's 36 by 36 and it's stretched and has a really deep side on it, or one and a half inch deep side. So we'll paint them all the way around. She wanted them on gold metallic background. Now it's an oil painting, yes, but we started out with a, a kind of a really a thin layer of acrylic gold paint and then I'm painting the oil over the top of it. You can do that as long as the acrylic that you painted underneath doesn't have a shiny surface to it because if it's shiny your paint will just slide right off when you try to paint oil or it won't stick at all. So you have to be a little bit careful. You want to have at least some uh, tooth left on the canvas. We call that tooth, meaning uh, the strings kind of stick up a little bit in order for your oil paint to stick onto the canvas itself. All right, that being said, we painted the gold underneath and this is actually a copper acrylic that I just kind of patterned out a few apples and it's not set in stone. I can move them around if I want, but um, I just wanted to give myself an idea of where I'm gonna place these apples. And then I came down here and began with the uh, oil painting in uh, the, the, the Delicious Apple, which is a red delicious, and then I moved to a Granny Smith, and this is a Golden Delicious over here, and we have the beginnings of a, um, what is that? I'm not sure. It might be a honey crisp or something like that. There are a lot of different varieties of apples. Yes, there are. And so we're going to cover quite a few of them on this painting. I hope to, uh, in the future episode, be able to show you how the whole painting finished up. And uh, it's going to be a good one. I really like this idea. Okay, now let's get started. Now the main thing on this is to not have too many things that are picket fence. Uh, you want everything to kind of um, be a little bit different so that it has a flow. And so I want to aim this particular apple and I'm going to make a Granny Smith this on this round. Now what I've got going right now in my colors, a combination of a couple of different things. Now these are of the large tubes of paint, of gambling paint. I have a Hansa Yellow Medium. I love that color. It's a great color. It's just a little bit like cadmium yellow medium. It's very similar. So if you don't have Hansa, don't worry about it. And then I've also added a little bit of phthalo turquoise to the Hansa Yellow. So you don't have to have all the various different greens. You can make them. It's pretty cool. So I've added a little bit of Hansa Yellow, a lot of Hansa Yellow, to the turquoise. And um, I, I'm making the shape here and making sure that I get it just, I, I may paint the whole apple and then if I want to put something else in it over the top, I will. But uh, we'll put it like this and so I'm going to aim the stem going up this way a little bit. So I'm going to make it a little bit bigger right there. And I'm using a bit of medium right now, uh, which is the Neo Magel. Now, if you if you want to, you can use just thinner to start with, and then um, uh, just use thinner. And then on your second layer, you can go ahead and use the um, you know the the medium stuff. So uh, you want to use thinner first if you can, unless it's your second layer of paint, which this is my second layer of paint, and I can use medium on that. Mostly I have my Hansa Yellow Medium mixed with a little bit of turquoise and a little bit of white. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more white on this and build that up a little bit. You see how that, I just added some white. And on when you're doing a picture like this where you have a lot of different objects and you're not exactly sure uh, where they're all going. I've got a little hair on there. So when you're painting, um, so a lot of different objects that uh, are coming from different directions. The main thing is make sure your light's coming from the same direction. Okay, otherwise it's not going to make sense. So you can add things, yes, but make sure you now my light's coming from the right. When you're a right-handed person, most of the time, you're going to be most comfortable with the light coming from the right side, your right side. And if you're a left-handed person, it's the opposite. It's just really one of those crazy things. Now, green is my uh, is my 
main color on this one, I'm going to think about what would happen if I put a little bit of red. Now it's going to make it a different kind of an apple. So instead of putting red, I often use red with a green in an apple. This is a Granny Smith apple, so I want to make it a little bit different. And so I'm going to use a little bit of a purple, that sounds so weird, and a tiny bit of teal. And then I'm going to come underneath that and test that out. Here's just a little shadow area and a little shadow with purple and teal. So this is a manganese violet, oh gosh, what have I got? Uh, I think it's actually a dioxazine purple, yes, and a little bit of phthalo teal, like that. Now, while I've got it on there, I'm going to kind of scumble that in a little bit. And I'll put a little bit of that on, and then I'm going to go back into my uh, green color and work it back towards that shadow. I'm just going back and forth, back and forth, and with my, um, again, this is a, again, I haven't said it yet, it's a number nine uh, filbert, and it's a bristle brush. And so I'm going to work my shadow in, in kind of layers. And so I'll pull that down, and eventually I'll have a little bit of reflected light coming underneath this apple. So I'll pull that up. I don't, one of the things I don't want is a sharp edge as this apple goes back into space. So I want to hopefully have something to paint into that at some point, but it, before I do, I'll make sure that that's a soft edge, and uh, we'll put this kind of green, <laughs> my little dog is sneezing right now, that's pretty funny. Okay, um, now I'm going to go back into a little brighter version of the, um, the green and the teal and yellow combination. And as I move up the apple, I'm going to make it lighter and lighter. Now this next round, I'm going to add just pretty much just yellow onto my brush. I don't clean my brush. I haven't rinsed it out at all. I'm adding yellow to the brush, straight yellow, into the center part of that apple as it goes up. And I'm just moving my brush. I'm, I'm not painting it this way. I'm just laying the brush down pretty flat and then I'm wiggling that brush back and forth. And I don't pick up the brush, I'm just moving it. I just lay it on the canvas, wiggle, 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 back and forth, and wiggle that paint on. Now I'm gonna add a little bit more white, and I might even add just a tiny touch of phthalo turquoise to the white. And I haven't cleaned my brush, and I'm gonna add a little bit of medium, and someday I'm gonna have my two cameras working again and you'll be able to see the whole thing. Wouldn't that be nice? Okay, uh, let's see. I'm going to go like this and I'm going to now move up with, this is the teal with added to my brush with some white and you see how that begins to shape it a little bit. Oh, oh. Shapes it. Oops, I got a little bit of dirt on it. Now at this point is the point when I'm going to wipe my brush off with a little bit of a paper towel. You want to be careful not to get too much of that dark paint that was already on my brush. Back into the white with the teal and some medium. And I'm going to now take it and I'm going to move it up to the top of the apple with the lightest color. And you can see how that's just becoming quite beautiful. And then I'll work it backwards towards the dark. Okay, so now I'm going to go backwards. I put the white up here. I think my dog's allergic to me. Yes. Yeah, you are. Yes. Okay, and then we work this, this uh, teal back towards the other part of the apple, towards the middle. So what I'm, what I'm trying to get is I'm getting this. I have, a, I have a tonal, a base color of this green color. And then as it goes into the dark, it has some purple and teal. Now you could add just one or the other and it might work. And then as we go up into the light, it's white. Okay, so the key on any good painting is to not over mix. And this is what I'm saying, man oh man. In fact, one of the little boys in my class, uh, just he, he must have heard me say it too many times because I have to really work on this with kids. Uh, and adults as well. They think it's so much fun to just put puddles of paint on or put something on 
and then just go over it and over it and over it and over it and they think they're painting when they do that. The more they stroke it, the much it's going to be much better. Wrong! The less amount of energy that you stroke onto your canvas, the better your painting's going to be. My little well, my little friend Skylar in my class said, started making up a song because I say it as often as I can. Don't mix and mix and mix and mix and mix and mix and mix or you'll make mud. Yeah, that's the song. We'll have to make a tape and put a beatbox beat against it. Wouldn't that be fun? We might have to do that. <laughs> anyway, so the key is do not over mix. I put my stroke down. If it needs a little bit of adjustment, I'll adjust it, but I'm not going to over mix it. So now I'm going to come back on the top and I'm going to put in an even brighter highlight as it goes across and then I don't touch it as much as I can. Okay, I might want to take a little bit of the edge and mess with it a little bit, but I don't want that paint to, to just blend or mix in. The word is mix and then I'm going to take that same thing and go across here on this top of this apple. You see that stroke, how beautiful it is? What would happen if I just kept hitting it? Can you see this? And uh, well, let's just see. Uh, I hate to ruin it. I'm just going to leave it. Okay, I can't do it. I want to leave it just the way it is. And then I'm dragging the paint that I have down into here. And now I'm going to take a little bit more of the... Now this is a, a Naples yellow. Well, let's go back into our cadmium yellow with white. And I will make it feel a little bit more sunny next to that stroke. And I lay down my brush flat. And I lay down a little bit of the light yellow without so much blue and we'll find where the light hits like that a little bit more yellow and then as it curves down in well the, it picks up a little light for some reason right around the edge here and let's see oh I've got a backlight that's a bit of a minty color that's right about here okay I gotta find that probably even with the large apple I could probably use a, even a wider brush. But uh, here's another thing. When I lay down a stroke like what I just did, I'm going to show you one more time. I've got a little bit of, and I'll have to mix it up, a little bit of a teal color right here. And I'll set that down like this. Maybe another stroke next to it, like that. Now, if I want to affect it to where it feels like it's going round rather than these stripes, now, here's the other stroke that I can do without overmixing. Take my brush and move it in the opposite direction. And I'm thinking about what that shape is. And I'll move it this direction, in this direction, like this. So I move down and I only hit it one time. And then I'll, I'll clean up the edge right there. And hopefully, now this is a little bit too uh, on its own. So I'm going to come back in with a little bit of yellow. You can put layers of color. But you really should let each layer dry before you start glazing. You have to let the under paint dry before you can glaze uh, another uh, bit of oil over the top of it. Okay, this is a bit abrupt right here. And I want to put in, uh, again, a little bit of my teal with my green, a little darker value in here. This is the little belly button of the apple right here. And... Uh, Hey, you know, if you want to learn how to paint something, get a bucket of apples. And then if they're all different, boy, and you can figure out which apple you've just painted by uh, have your friends come in and say, which apple was this? If they can figure out which apple you've painted in a bucket of apples, you're getting pretty good, all right? So give it a shot. Get a bucket of apples, different kinds, and try painting each one. Uh, in its individual state. Okay, I'm going to come back up in here and I see the back side of the apple. That's got a little bit of a yellow to it. I could add even orange in here and it would be an interesting color. Uh, I put a little bit of a, an orangish yellow in that one. This one's got a little more of a bluish green to it because they're all different. They're all different. Each one has its own little personality. Okay, and then the bottom of this apple somehow is picking up some light. So I've got a light blue. I'm going to have to set out some more white now. A little bit of a light blue as it comes 
around like this. Yeah, light blue. Now that's a bit messy still, so I'm going to now take my brush. I could take a wider brush if I had one. La la la. Oh, I do. This is a flatter brush, and uh, this one is a number 10 bristle bright. Now I'm going to just lightly go over the, this strokiness and pull in the top layer of the paint just carefully everybody and I just broke that down a little bit and then I'll go back in and perhaps put another highlight on it just a moment and remember as you're working up your paint you might use more medium each layer you use and your paint gets thicker the more layers you put on so it will stick better I'm so used to painting them smaller it's hard to even think in this size it's really really big and again a little bit more blue I think this time let's see what that looks like if I put a little more blue color in that, that's really blue Woo! now I'll add a little white to it you can often mix your paints right on to the canvas don't think that you only mix down here on your palette you can always mix uh, mix your paint as you put it on there. So I could put down a stroke of turquoise and add a little white to it onto the uh, the back reflection on here. I'm going to I'm going to take my rag and or my little paper towel and I place the stem in the wrong position. So because I've already got a, a background on here, I can wipe it off. Okay, so now I'm going to, uh, I went in and I kind of wiped out that area and I go around my apple with this little paper towel and soften the edges a little bit and correct some things. And then I'll go in with this brush and I'm going to take a, mix a little bit of, of brown color by putting some green with alizarin crimson. All right, green, my dark green with alizarin crimson be sap green maybe with alizarin crimson and I'll give it a stem that comes out like that how far out can I go there we go and then I'll take a little bit of white with uh, let's see a little bit of purple maybe yeah you can do brown and white if you want but I've got kind of a lavender color top to it and we'll see if that works there so I've got a, a dark color underneath and a light color on top, and then I'm going to broaden this out a little bit like that. The color of the apple that goes under here, this is my problem, is always going to be trying to figure out how to connect the apples. Now this is going to be a very, very dark, dark value. I don't know what color to make it. I think maybe we'll make it into a dark red apple so that it looks like it might have rolled out from the same kind of a basket. And I'm going to make that into, let's see how dark, yeah, that's good. All right, how about this dark, dark alizarin crimson? This is just gonna be the connecting tone. And I started in the center of that shape with the alizarin crimson. And then as I move out, I'm gonna add a little bit of purple, the dark dioxazine purple to give it a bit of a shadow. So I'm gonna add that down in here. I'm gonna go with the manganese violet right here and put some medium on it. Where was I having a little problems with pets? Oh my gosh. Anyway, uh, I'll add a little bit of, I've got this dark color down in here and I might put a little bit of cadmium red just to I mean, this is a very nondescript. I, I think I'll move it a little bit over uh, into this apple a little bit farther so that it, it feels more, gives it a little bit more space. And we'll make this appear to be kind of the, the uh, just a little bit of an apple sticking out underneath like that. Okay, I wanna give this a distinction between this apple and that apple. Now, the question is, do I go darker or lighter? Well, I might go lighter up in here so that it feels as though it's round. I Actually, you know what? I want this apple to come out this way and make it a little bit rounder. So I'm going to pretend that that's an apple, the apple shape right there. 
Yeah, that looks better. Okay, and as it comes out forward, then I'm going to add that. It picks up a tiny bit of light. That's just cadmium red. I think that's working, but I want to make this really dark back in here. So this is alizarin crimson with a little bit of the purple color. And I want it even darker than the top of this apple. Now I can do that two different ways. I can put, I make this dark, yes. I'm going to go back in with the manganese, manganese, uh, the purple, dark, dark, dark dioxazine purple right there. And then on top of that, the apple below, I want it to stick out a little way. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some cadmium red light, which takes a long time to dry everybody, a long time. Uh, and I'm going to come up and add a little bit of cadmium red light to this top, this apple below it. And you see how that just makes that stand out a little bit. Now if I want to make this red even lighter, what do I do? Well, I don't add white because uh, if I add white, it's just like what happens when you put your husband's tidy whities into the laundry with your favorite red sweater. It just turns pink. And so what you need to do is you need to add orange or yellow or make yourself an orange with a little bit of yellow and cadmium red. So a light color of, of yellow with cadmium red. And you see how that looks like a lighter red rather than white or pink. You don't want it pink if it's not pink. If it's a red apple, you don't want it to have a pink highlight. Give it an orange highlight. And I'm going to put that even on top of this. Even though I don't really see that in the actual apple that's sitting in front of me. And I might add another blue uh, highlight on top of this apple. A teal looking highlight. Uh, just to give it a little more of a... Um, look at that. That's teal. That's just beautiful. And then I'll curve it in like this with the teal. When you're working on a larger subject, you really need to use a bigger brush, everybody. This is crazy. There, that's a little better. It's just a, a difference between a size 8 and a size 10. So I'll put that down. Okay, getting that laid in there. Now I'll go back in with some of the cadmium color and put that right next to it. But the cadmium color, look how I can put a nice stripe there. If I want to blend those two together, I just dry my brush off, put half of my brush onto the red, the bright red, half onto the dark red, and I just, I don't pick up my brush, I just wiggle it back and forth a bit. And it blends those together, and then I'll just take a very light stroke over the top, and it just kind of fixes it like that. Okay? Oh, before I get anywhere else, i got to definitely show you one more trick. You see how this edge right here is extremely sharp between the red and the green. Well, I'm going to try something really fast. I'm using a Q-tip. This is one of my favorite blending tools for edges, everybody. I'm going to go like this and I'm going to take my Q-tip and lay it down flat and I'm wiggling it back and forth a bit. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Now again, I can do this with a brush. Uh, and I can do it with a cloth and I'm softening up that edge a little bit and then I'll do the same thing I'll just keep moving it over a little ways and I soften up the edge because I don't want it looking like it's a paper cutout and I'll I might even broaden that just a little bit I know I'm putting red up into my apple here that's okay now I'll flip over the q-tip to a clean side and I'll kind of brush that apple back in. But you can see how that just went from very, very sharp to a nice, soft edge. Anything that goes back into space that's round needs to have a soft edge. I'm softening it. Before I even get to this apple, I'm going to now soften this edge a little bit in preparation for the next apple to come over the top. The place where my eye is going to land is going to be where the darkest dark meets the lightest light at the sharpest edge. Don't forget that one. Put that one on your wall, actually. The point of focus is where the darkest dark meets the lightest light at the sharpest edge. That's where your eye is going to go. 
All right, well, that's all I'm going to work on today. Perhaps I'll show you this painting when it's finished at a later time. So, who knows what we're going to be painting next. Actually, no, I'd like to show you. I'm going to be painting a bridal painting that's wonderful, and I'll show you how to begin and how it ends up. I'm so thankful that you've been able to join me today, and don't forget to subscribe and share with your friends. That's how we grow, all right? Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you again next time. Bye-bye.